you, uh, you, when you took power, you were promising a very clean government to the right. people. Is that still intact? And uh, do, do you, you seem to be saying that it's not so much your minister in trouble, but the rules that are wrong. Could you explain yeah. that? Okay. Uh, what we're talking about here is an investment in two private companies where there's no market. They are not quoted on a stock exchange. There are no buyers for uh, these uh, two companies. So even if Mr. Fitzgibbon wanted to sell those companies, he didn't find any buyers. I think that we can manage to have a, a, a minister holding very small amounts in two small companies being able to continue to manage the rest of the Quebec economy. And I think if we uh, want to have uh, uh, people with experience in the business, I think it's about normal that these people, they, that they have some interest in some uh, private company. So I think it's about time that we uh, change the code the, 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 with the opposition parties. Of course, we have to do that together, but uh, it has to respect uh, the principle, uh, the spirit. Uh, we don't want to have any conflict of interest. And I think we can manage to make sure uh, uh, in being very open uh, to, to make sure we protect this uh, independence. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fitzgibbon, you've repeated throughout this press conference that the, the businesses in which you hold, um, I don't know, some sort of share uh, are very small. How do you classify a small business? And if you're talking about um, potentially updating the code of ethics, how would we go about classifying, for instance, the, the type of business that you own versus um, the type of business that Mr. Pelado owns? Well, well, I think the issue of size is perhaps irrelevant in terms of what should be defined as the flexible code. I think the issue is more, and, and uh, Sir here talk about you know, clean government, I think the issue is about allowing uh, someone in, in office not to be conflicted, to put his personal interests ahead of the interests of the, the, the community he wants to serve. I think that's the key, how do you define ethic? And I think the issue here is, can a ministry a minister, any, any department can own shares. Can it can it can it be uh, Chinese wall organized around so he's not the person is not involved in decision making process to give financial incentive? And I think that's the issue. In the case of the company that uh, that is referred to, it's the, the size is a, is a revenue of ten million dollar. It could be fifty. I, I don't think the size matters. I think it's more what kind of measures do you put so there's no conflict where personal interest and interest of community are, are uh, head to head, and that, that's the issue. And what I did in that company is I protected that situation by not allowing the government to have any financial incentive, hence never put myself into a conflict of interest. I'm just curious because you've also mentioned um, that a number of times that there is no market to sell. Uh, okay, you said that one business was $10 million, but I assume that there's no market for the two businesses. Um, can you, I know you said you didn't want to mention the names of them, but can you explain what kind of company it is? What kind of company has no market? Yeah, and I, I mean, perhaps also a background as well. I mean, my, my, uh, my day job before I went to politics was to help a family office to invest in private equity, in private uh, investment. So in each company that we were investing, I put some, some money uh, personally, you know, small amount of money to be to be a line of interest. So I had 13 of those. So when I um, decided to come into politics, I knew I would have to dispose of those uh, shares. But it's a, it's a private company, so there's no line of people who wanted to buy. You have to make an effort and talk to people to see who wants to buy it. So I was able to sell 11 out of the 12, out of 13, sorry, in about uh, seven, eight months. It's all about personal contact, so it's, it's, it's a full-time job. In the case of the company that I couldn't sell, uh, it's a small company, so when the smaller you are, the less shareholders you have and the less people will know the company, right? So this company is not th that much known. So to try to sell it, it's a private kind of a market, so there was, there was no market. What kind of company it was? I mean, the same can be said about a, an old car, right? Like, not, there's, 
maybe a less of a market for yeah, well, a, a car do, 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 that uh, is unknown from a private seller? Like, what kind of company? Can, it, can you give us some sort of hint of what kind of? Well, it's a company involved in techno. It's called a technology company. Okay. Company have been in existence for five, seven years. So sales of ten million. These companies, they can be worth you no. Know, the, the owner of a share I think it's worth you no. Know, Ten dollar, and then I talk to you. Say, well, maybe it's worth one dollar. There's no. It's even difficult to put a value because it's a. It's a, it's a company. It's in, in the growing process. So, normally speaking, you don't sell these businesses because you just wait for time to come. So that the difficulty is the, the 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 industry in which it was involved. While other companies I had had revenue, they existed for twenty years. So that's easier because they're known, and then there's always people wanted to get in. So the the nature of the business made it practically impossible to sell.